Right, good afternoon then everyone as we are at the beginning of another week of trading on Monday the 4th of March. We'll have a flick across the calendar and across the raft of different asset classes that we take a look at and we'll see what we think <coughs> might be ahead on the uh, on the coming week. And we take it back to last week though quickly, I mean dollar was a bit choppy kind of across the board failed to push higher failed really to push lower and across the, the majority of these these currencies i mean your aussie and kiwi were lower yesterday kiwi yesterday or your lower last week should i say but kiwi kind of more driven by the rbnz rather than anything to do with the united states i think euro dollar i mean lack of clear direction across euro dollar for a couple of weeks now same thing on cable same thing on dollar yen dollar swiss dollar cad slightly higher but again not really too much to see here across the broader us dollar spectrum I think what is interesting is these yields though these yields have kind of taken a bit of a turn for the worst on Friday I know wrap up last week we were looking at looking at that kind of manufacturing um, that manufacturing print from last week if we just go back to uh, kind of the previous week and start start back at the start I mean you got these durable goods orders out of the US on Tuesday super negative below consensus also below previous so they were pretty bad figures exclude the transport um exclude transportation that's that's the same thing or across a multiple you know multiple data prints over the course of last week as well look at gdp the second estimate for for q4 of um of last year below consensus you come into a pce on thursday in line with expectations okay income was a slight bit slight bit higher but then a pretty negative print when it comes to the manufacturing pmi on friday so last week a bit of a turn for the worst in terms of u.s economic data that again does bring the prospects of rate cuts further into uh, into consideration for markets which did spark a bit of a rally as you can see in equities to finish the week you look at this hourly chart you know massive upside across the s p uh, and the nasdaq on uh, in, in in friday session the dow jones the russell not really managing to not not such gains no, uh, dow jones has taken a kind of a turn for the worst in the last number of hours certainly is lower to begin the uh, to begin the week this week but you know yields yields look they look a bit vulnerable up here at these highs don't they i mean you know since kind of over the course of this year they have been they have been higher but ultimately since kind of mid-february they've just chopped sideways and now they have taken a bit of a turn for the worst lower highs and lower lows on that one hour chart and you know if that pushes lower means you know less yield on, on bonds in the u.s means less demand for u.s dollars therefore it may be a bit negative for the price of um for the price of the US dollar in line with all the raft of uh, kind of weak economic data last week kind of brings these figures that we've got this week kind of more into uh, more into focus which we'll have a look at now in a minute but yields lower over the course of that last week 10 year 2 year about lower that has helped gold higher but we'll talk about that again in a minute i think i mean US assets are always in focus but certainly with yields pushing lower moving the way they are you know certainly look like it looks like a bit of a kind of topping out no no kind of recognizable patterns or any such in there but certainly a bit of a turn for the worst in uh, in last week's session markets or certainly equity markets did take a bit of positivity off the back of that now we haven't got much out today not really not really anything for us to go off go off today but we do have this services pmi now on tuesday now a good tradable opportunity that we can get was if this economic data lined up in line with last week and again brings forward the prospects of interest rate cuts from the fed services pmi expected in at 53 tomorrow is something we can definitely keep an eye on uh, is something we can definitely keep an eye on in, in, in tomorrow's session. Factory orders, I mean, they're an extremely important figure back in the day, back in the 90s, early 2000s. Obviously, in recent years, not too much to be seen out of there, but that's expected negative as well, right? Which, again, is, is you know, a bit of a uh, kind of manufacturing figure. It's a you know, decent figure to look at within the economy. I think these second tier numbers probably come a bit into focus as we get through to the rest of the week. We have some job openings figure and ADP employment figures, job openings figures. Now, it's not a great front runner for NFP, but certainly employment change, if that comes in negative, if, if you know, job openings, job openings fall, will again that's the situation where you probably see us dollars lower you then obviously come into nfp on friday which is a bit of a nightmare when it comes around to the canadian figures as well all coming out at the same time it's a little bit annoying but we're expecting 200k jobs added which is massively below the 353 from the month of january now that could be just seasonal figures you know for january february kind of you know the sales and stuff in january is kind of you'd more look at december really for those those types of figures but ultimately you know you've had strong employment figures over recent over recent months in the u.s these figures can go in line with um these figures can go in line with 
with recent economic data from the US. I say recent over the last kind of week, two weeks, and that should be a recipe for US dollars lower and probably stocks higher. But another thing that can help us higher is the you know the National People the National People's Congress, you know, the, the, the government in China meet over the course of this week and markets will look keenly uh I mean they got inflation out on Saturday. Why well, I don't know why they have it out on Saturday but um Look at that. I mean, what, what do you expect coming out, out, out off the back of that? You'd be looking for kind of further updates on stimulus. If if they go, if they do go and deliver some form of stimulus, that should help equity markets higher, especially if the US dollar is lower. Weak economic data forces the Fed to cut interest rates earlier. It should be positive for equities. If you look at that, if the Chinese come out and, and give us a bit of help in terms of stock indexes by, by, by pumping some money into the Chinese economy in order to boost economic growth in their struggling economy. Again, that's a situation where stocks probably probably have a bit of fun for themselves um the bank of canada and the ecb it's always a bit more difficult trade when when you're not expecting any sort of uh, not expecting any sort of um uh, cut or hike or anything you kind of have to look at uh, kind of the rhetoric around the statement you won't get a full clue of how the bank of canada pans out on wednesday until you get that press conference at 3 30 um Kind of what to expect from the Bank of Canada? I mean, they they, they did take a dovish step in the last meeting. Did they? They did kind of drop the um the the we are prepared to 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 hike further narrative, and they are you know they have dropped that, and you know the next you know, they're pretty much admitted to markets that the next interest rate move will be a cut. Now you could have guessed that for yourself, but there was some comments within the statement that they did drop. That, that, that removes the, the couple of lines they had about keeping interest rates or well not keeping interest rates higher for longer but certainly the, the the need to tighten more if necessary you come into then the ecb and you've got to look at the ecb what they have to say i mean no ecb interest rates in europe are from the ecb consensus 4.5 they are lower than the majority of the rest of the central banks i mean you see the bank of canada itself at five the fed at five and a half you know uk up in the uh, up in the fives, obviously the Bank of Japan, Swiss National Bank are a little bit different, but you know, Australia's Australia is similar to Europe, but then in New Zealand they're up in the fives as well. So um, interest rates lower in the ECB or lower from the ECB than than the majority of the rest of the G8 that they are competing with, and also uh, an economy that's kind of struggling a little bit more than the rest of them. So you know, what do they come and tell us about interest rate cuts? I have to imagine they probably at least talk about it. That might get in the way of a bit of US dollar le- dollar weakness, but again, you can't do too much prediction into that ahead of time. As you do, um, do need to wait and see how that pans out. Come on, come come Thursday. But I think Bank of Canada and ECB are a little bit more wait and see. The economic data you got to keep an eye on. All this US economic data you can see services PMI, and you got jobs figures on Wednesday and into more jobs figures on Friday. So if it goes in line with last week's economic data. And comes in negative that should be a fairly simple sell of the us dollar whether that results in upside in the stocks i mean considering how stocks reacted to that manufacturing print on friday you'd have to imagine that is the that is the case if that does end up unfolding and the chinese come in and announce you know fresh stimulus measures again that's a that's a situation where stocks rally so you know I have to take a bet right now. I would say probably stocks higher, dollars lower come the end of the week. That's certainly that's what I would hope for. Whether that pans out is obviously a different question. I need to keep a, keep an eye on these um these figures and see how they uh, see how they come out. Oil slightly higher in today's session to kind of to start the week. Back end the uh, back end of last week. Well, I say it's back flat now. It's slightly higher over the last couple of hours, but um. Friday, a bit of upside on Friday, a bit of a chop to start the week, and it looks like it wants to put a push back high. I've had a bit of a pullback. It looks like green light ahead for the price of gold, with OPEC extending output cuts for another for another three months to try and um to try and not have some sort of over overweighted supply. So yeah, I mean you know I was looking earlier on over the last kind of since December or since the back end of December, start of January this year, is already twenty three million barrels down in terms of supply in the u.s that continues to be tight supply that pushes price higher push, pushes prices higher if opec do i say opec have come out and continued with output cuts that again is another you know another another positive for the price of oil then you take the middle eastern conflict into consideration again you'd have to imagine oil continues its move higher gold is an interesting one through the highs today even when yields are a bit higher shows what gold thinks of of, of recent moves but again that kind of goes in line with maybe a bit of us dollar weakness 
bit of yield weakness go hand in hand with each other and then pushes gold higher so that's kind of what i'm thinking in to this week as bitcoin continues its assault higher over the weekend and into today so far as well you know record highs up on bitcoin at 69,000, which was see i'm mixing up my mixing up my words 69,000 again we were looking at that the other day do we get a record high on bitcoin this week it'd be certainly interesting if we do but uh whatever whatever you think of of cryptocurrencies you just have to imagine that does reach a fresh all-time high at some point does it breach 70 that certainly be an interesting one to keep an eye on probably too high of a price to go buy now if you haven't bought into it any dips on bitcoin you have to imagine would be suitable for buys um but yeah that's kind of what we're thinking heading into this week again it's you gotta kind of wait and see how how, how some of these numbers materialize if they do materialize the way we're kind of hoping for it should provide some good tradable opportunities but if not we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it uh, we'll update further as we go on through the week best of luck this week try and make some money and, and see how you end up come uh, come friday